spirit there's a lot of things that men planned that didn't happen and a lot of things that men tried to orchestrate in the world and it didn't happen the way they thought it would what you're actually looking at right now is a victory you're not looking at what you think you're seeing you live in a world where the tail wags the dog. Remember that. But in reality, a great victory happened because things were set to happen that didn't happen. You, I really can't say any more than that right at this minute. But rejoice in the victory of your God. Rejoice in the victory the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob brought about this time. For things were supposed to happen and were planned to happen that would have changed the landscape of everything. But it didn't happen. Oh, the Lord's going to show you more about that in the days ahead. In the days ahead, He will let me say more about that. has won, our God has won the war, our God has won, our God has won, our God has won the war, our God has won.
shout to God. Don't you love it when the enemy's plans just don't work out? They just don't work out. Now, you may think you've got one thing in your mind right now that didn't work out. But there's multiple facets to what's went on in the world that didn't happen the way it was planned. I'm just telling you it didn't. You know, it's amazing. What you have to remember is as believers, as believers, you are strategically placed in a moment in time. See, God could have had each and every one of us born in any time in history that he wanted us born. Have you ever thought about that? He could have had you born a thousand years ago as much as he did in 1960. I mean, he could have done that. He could have had David born today. He could have, put, he could have had you born in any time in history. But David was the man suited for his day. And you are the one suited for this time. Oh, come on now. Hallelujah. If you've got a shofar, somebody ought to blow it. I mean, you just ought to sound it, man.
of rain. What did it sound like? What could it have sounded like to Elijah? The abundance of rain. Said I hear the sound. Hamas, no, Hamas, no, Hamas. 
must know the Lord says no do you hear it did you hear it intercession and prayer people say well this sounds strange no it sounds like Bible it sounds like Bible Have you never seen, have you never seen the days of Elijah? Have you never seen the days when God fought by fire? Israel is in danger, so the Almighty awoke because he never slept to start with never slept to start with he never sleeps or slumbers but his justice awoke next in the land of the liar you're gonna see the ring of fire snap where it was together watch says the Lord and see what I do next in the land of the liar Iran the liar says the Lord I warned you the whole time I told you do not come against Israel do not come against Israel and you had to drag them into this you had to drag them into this and I do not like the beheading of babies I do not like that says the Lord and you have messed with my heritage and my lambs. You messed with my lambs. For now, I am going to fight with my hand. I'm going to show you my hand. You will see the backside of my hand. Then you will see the backside of my hand. And then I will slowly turn it around so you see the palms of my hand. I warned you. I warned you. And you wouldn't listen. I told you. I told you. Months ago, says the Lord. I told you the leader of that Islamic Muslim nation. I told you. I was talking to you in the night. And you wouldn't listen. I said, listen or else. But you wouldn't listen. You rather would listen to men than listen to me. And now you see what's happening. 
It will not return to normal. And you will not have the power you had before. For now I'm going to give Israel more land. I'm going to give them more land. And part of it will be yours. And you will see. I'm going to tell you something. Ignore what France tells you. And you make peace. Make the most peace you can with Israel. For I am going to do something now that will tingle the ears to the point that men's ears will burn and their teeth will chatter in fear for what's going to happen next. Do not be afraid nor alarmed when you hear the explosion that happens. For I have it all right here. I have it all here. I have promises that I've made to prophets, promises I've made to priests, and promises I've made and covenant with the earth that I would make certain things happen before the end comes. And so I shall. So I shall. Do not think the Almighty's arm is short, for it is not. Oh, bearded one, you bit off more than you could chew. For now I'm looking at you, says the Lord. And I am looking at you. And you can't look back at me. For you can't look into the eyes of justice. I warned you to leave them alone. And you did not do it. For now I'm going to make Israel so many more than they are going to make them more than they are as I release angels to fight. The angelic host with drawn swords. Oh, you thought the days of Jericho were all gone, but they're not. Oh, you thought the days of Samuel and the thunder was gone, but it's not. You thought that Israel sat helpless and defenseless, the little tiny sliver of land, but you forgot to figure in my body hand. The God of Israel, the God of Israel, come on, the God of Israel, the God of Israel. the word of the Lord, the word of the Almighty. He don't care what you think about it either. Well, I don't know that you're hearing God. He don't even care. Things are happening anyway, aren't they? Now, I heard the Lord say something about the United States. And I haven't heard a word from the U.S. in a while. The Lord said, I am protecting you from terror attacks. I am protecting you. I am protecting you from, from attacks that you saw in the past. But I'm expecting you to spot them as they rise. You can't do that looking through ungodly eyes. The Lord says, you are coming against my church in this nation. You're trying to take away their rights and their laws. Leave the church alone. Leave them alone. I raised them up for your salvation and for my revivals. Leave them alone. Social media, leave the church alone. Facebook, leave the church alone. Come on and let's lift our hands and bless God now. I heard the Lord say that I'm protecting you from attacks like in the past because of the words of my prophet, Kim Clement. 
be thankful there was a prophet. sense something special in the house tonight. See, we're in a special time. We're in a time when the world is afraid. We're in a time when God is being looked at all over the world. Our God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory, is being recognized all over the world right now. You can't look at Israel without looking at God. Netanyahu said he called on God to fight for Israel. He asked God to fight for Israel. What, what national leader do you ever hear say such things? He talks about our prophets. He speaks of Moses. And he speaks of different prophets. And he don't care what you think about them. He don't care whether you believe in him or not. And he stood in our Congress and looked back over the balcony and he pointed at the picture on the wall and he said, our prophet Moses is hanging right there on that picture. Your God is God. I don't know, sometimes I think we ought to be more excited about that. We don't have a God of stone. We don't have a God of bone. We don't have a God of glass. We don't have a God of the past. Our God is God. God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. 
just about done now. Come on and be happy. All this sounds strange to most of the world, but I can just promise you that if you could go and listen to King David play, you would be amazed at some of the same sounds you hear. He invented almost every instrument we know of, and he knew how to play them all. And the Jewish people teach that David, now this is their words, that he was so pious in what he believed that he could go into prayer and pray things in heaven from heaven and they would materialize on the earth. Now this is their teaching and they don't care what you think about that. That's what the amazing thing is. If you ask a rabbi, well, I don't believe that, he'd say, I don't care. It would be to your benefit, he would say, if you did. You know, it was amazing to me. I get up one morning in Israel, and I'm, I'm looking out over the Sea of Galilee. And the Lord said, and it wasn't this coat, it was another. The Lord said, I want you to put on that, your other long coat. Step out on the balcony. It's about 2 or 3 in the morning something like that and he said stretch your staff out over the sea of galilee he said a prophet has come back to israel so stretch your staff out and call for peace well i didn't know there was going to be a war and he started there that morning and he said now hold your staff out over and there was a courtyard down below and the sea of galilee is just right there and i looked down and here comes two priests with long black coats on. Isn't that something? And their hair was long as mine. In ringlets. But they had black hats on. Long coats to their ankles. And they came walking, two of them walked right under my staff as I, it was stretched out. They never looked up, but there was a prophet standing on the balcony with his staff out and two priests walking below. And all three wearing long black coats. And I thought, what would other people, you know, I mean, look at it. Look at this scene. And we didn't know there was a war coming. And they didn't either. And the Lord began to prophesy. He said, I want you to go from place to place. And y'all were there. And he said, I want you to go from place to place and start speaking peace. And, he, and we were on Mount Carmel. And he started talking about, I want you to really listen before we stop right here and, and because the, the service will change. Just, yeah, you just stay. And he said, I want you to start speaking peace. And then we were on Mount Carmel and he started talking about these birds of prey that would attack Israel. And I remember thinking, Lord, this, this is, we're at peace. What am I talking about? He said, you just say this and say this and say this. And I stood upon the rock where Elijah was and on that mountain looking out over the Mediterranean. And he said, call for peace over the land and over the Mediterranean and birds of prey to be stopped and explode in the air and so forth and born in the caves the birds of prey and little did we know later I was thinking he must be speaking of drones birds of prey and then the first attack on Israeli soil came from paragliders that looked like birds coming down out of the sky and 
And drones are also involved and used. But God was talking about this in the time of peace. And then one place he said, prophesy to the Mediterranean, the great sea. It's what it's called in the scripture, the great sea. Said and prophesy that it would fight for Israel. And then I was thinking it would just raise up and be a storm. Something would happen. And sure enough, all the warships from the nations pulled into the Mediterranean to fight for Israel. Now the Lord had us call them in in the time of peace. Then I remember, you say, well, you, you, no, no, none of us knew what we were doing at that time. But they were with us on the same bus and we were going from place to place to place. And then we get down on the Golan Heights where the Syrian border is. And the, and the wind kicked up. It was so bad. And it was cold and the wind was blowing. And the Lord said, get off this bus and walk out there and stretch your staff toward the Syrian border. And I'm not talking about like it was miles and miles and miles. And you say, see that dot? That's the Syrian border. No. It's like right up there at that traffic light. And you could see the UN buildings sitting there. And the Lord said, start saying to stop them from crossing this. All in a time of peace. I don't expect people that don't believe in prophecy to understand anything I'm saying. But one thing you do know. There's a raging war happening in Israel. But here is the deal. The Lord said something to me. And we went from place to Masada, to Shiloh, uh, Mount Carmel. I don't know how many places. Right in the center of Jerusalem that night. Was y'all with us that night? Was we together that night? And we're trying to find that prophecy that was in the Arab hotel there in the middle of Jerusalem. Remember? And but the Lord says this and I thought why am I saying peace and then talking about war everywhere we went because the scripture declares this when God begins a thing he said when I begin it I will also make an end in other words he's telling you the war was coming but he was having peace prophesied so that the end would, it would be a corridor through it and end it on the other side. Hallelujah. This is your God. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He is the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the King of glory. Jesus the Christ, God in the flesh gave his life for us so that we could be born again by his blood and his sacrifice and so that his spirit lives on the inside of us when you make him the Lord of your life and it gives you access into mysteries of the spirit hallelujah so inside each and every one of you there's three anointings king priest and prophet hallelujah and when we sing in the spirit pray in the spirit play in the spirit and just flow this music we we ended up we started playing things we that's not rehearsed it activates your spirit so before we I stop this part of the service at least what I have I want you to, if you will, lift up your voice for Israel and begin to pray. Pray for the children that are there. Pray. It's an un...